pressure is still low. Can we let the family in for a brief visit? Like that. Is she is she in pain? It's a part of the delirium. weak and helpless and there's nothing I can do for her. Well, that's why she's here, you know, to get the help she needs. Kelly, how long do you think it's going to be before the antibiotics take effect? Hopefully very soon, but, you know, it's a very debilitating infection. Don't expect her to jump right out of bed right away. Well, she's a fighter. She'll be all right. I hope you're right, Kelly. Now, listen, what I want you to do, I want you to go home and get some rest, and I'll call you if there's any change at all. No, 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 no. I'm not going to go home until I know she's all right. No, Mom, that's just silly. There's nothing you can do here to help. That may be true, but I'm not going home. Well, all right. In that case, do you want to go down to the cafeteria and we'll get some breakfast? No, honey, I'm not hungry. Come on, Abby, come on. How can you turn down a nice hot cup of hospital coffee, huh? <laughs> okay, all right. Maybe coffee. Good. Mr. McCoy, would you like to join us? Oh, I'm sorry, Maureen. What did you say? Well, my mom and I are going down to the cafeteria to get something. Uh, would you care to join us? I would, but first I'd like to talk to Dr. Nelson first. That is, if you have the time. Sure. All right, fine. Well, then we'll see you down there. And please, would you tell Tony where we are? Thanks again for letting us see Nola. You're welcome. First of all, I'd like to thank you for everything you've done to help Nola. Well, I'm doing all I can. But like I said before, it's a good thing you found her when you did, because uh, she couldn't have held out much longer. I see. What you're actually saying is that uh, it would have been better if I hadn't involved Nola in my personal feud with Silas Crocker in the first place. Listen, whatever that's all about, the important thing is that now she's getting the help she needs. Listen, why don't you take the advice I gave Miss Reardon and go home and get some rest? I, I, I couldn't. Mr. McCord, it's probably none of my business, but why don't you go to the police and give them all the information that you have about these people? I mean, they're still out there. I will handle it my own way, Dr. Nelson. Thank you. Excuse me. Reliving all the horrors she experienced at the hands of Silas Crocker, I can feel more guilty than I did before, if that's Mom possible. and Maureen still in there? No, Dr. Nelson advised them to go home and get some rest, but you know your mother, they're down in the cafeteria having coffee. Well, listen, I'm going to go down there and see if I can't talk her into taking Dr. Nelson's advice. I'll, uh... See you later, okay? All right. Mr. McCord, did uh, Kelly say when the rest of us could see Nola? No, he didn't. And I imagine that until the fever is down and the delirium is over, that no one but members of the immediate family will be allowed to go in. Well, uh, you're certainly not the uh, immediate family, and uh, you've already seen her. Lloyd, Mr. McCord's very close to Nola. That it doesn't have anything to do with it. It would be pointless for you to go in there, Floyd. Nola wasn't even aware that we were in the room with her. I don't care. I want to see her. Well, uh, you just have to wait a little while, that's all. I think everybody is forgetting here that Nola is the mother of my child. No one, I repeat, no one has forgotten that, Floyd. Or the threat of your custody suit, especially Nola. The entire time she was held captive, that's all she could think about. The fear of losing Kelly Louise. All the way home with what little strength she had left, that's all she could think about. And now you have the audacity to, to want to go into her room and upset her more. You are the last person that should be allowed in that room and, and remind her of what she's frightened of most. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. McCord. 
She never would have got kidnapped in the first place if she hadn't gotten involved in one of your crazy quests. Yeah, look, I, I think that uh, none of us are in any shape to talk about this right now. All right, all right. I was just upset. I was, I was, I was upset about Nola. I, I'm tired. Excuse me. All right, well, look, why don't we uh, get down to the cafeteria and see how Mrs. Reardon's doing? All right. We'll let you know if we hear anything else. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Yeah. Well, you can't take what Mr. McCord said personally. Well, how does he expect me to react? Well, he's obviously exhausted and worried about Nola. Well, I'm exhausted and worried about Nola, too, but why doesn't anyone want to believe me? Mr. McCord, there's been so much on my mind, I didn't get a chance to thank you for finding Nola and saving her life. There's no need to thank me, Mrs. Reardon. Of course there is. You risked your own life to save hers. Mrs. Reardon, I feel I owe you an apology for keeping Nola's whereabouts secret from everyone in the family except Anthony, but I knew the personalities of the captors, and I felt that it was best this way so we could take them by surprise. As long as you're both safe, it's all that matters. Hi. Oh, hi. Katie, any hi. news? Well, Dr. McIntyre and Dr. Bauer are examining Nola right now, and uh, Sarah said she'd come back and talk to you as soon as she's done. But apparently she agrees with Kelly's uh, diagnosis. Treatment. Miss Parker, yes. uh, I would like to apologize for the way I spoke to your brother earlier. Oh, don't worry about it. Floyd's just feeling a little, a little guilty right now because he thought that Nola had taken off and deserted Kelly Louise, but he's more defensive right now than he usually is. Katie, you seen Hillary? She's on three. How's she doing? Tired. But aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Ma, I'm gonna go up and see her, okay? Sure, honey. I'll see you okay. Hey, Katie, come up with you. thanks a lot for coming by and telling us about Dr. McIntyre. Sure thing. I'll let you know if I hear anything else. And then you two should get back and get some rest. We'll yeah. see. Oh, oh, Tony, where's your mother? Uh, the nurse said she might be here. She's right over there, Miss. Oh, oh thank you, thank you. B. Oh, Henry. Oh. oh, I'm glad you're here. Oh, how's Nolan? How are you? Well, I keep telling her she's getting better, but she looked pretty sick when we went in to see her. Oh, and what about you? When I find out she's getting better, I'll feel a lot better. But I, I'm doing okay. Oh. Mr. Chamberlain, why don't you just sit down, please? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Yes. I, I just don't know what to make of this. The last thing I heard, Nola was in California. Mm -hmm. well, well, I think it's all very complicated. Well, Mr. McCor could explain it to you. Well, of course. Uh, but uh, first, I should call Mrs. Renfield. I know she's worried sick. But why don't you wait until Dr. McIntyre's finished? Then you'll have more to report. Yes, but I could always... Call her back, couldn't I? Excuse me. He's very upset. He blames himself for everything that's happened to Nola. He blames himself? Yeah. Well, wait until he explains it all to you. It'll make much more sense, believe me. <sighs> Maureen, I somehow doubt that. Mr. Quinton R. McCord is one of the strangest and most secretive men I have ever encountered. He, uh, don't you think we ought to telephone and see if there's any news at the hospital? I don't think so, Henry. Maureen said she'd be sure to call us if there was any change. Mm -hmm. You know, I could just see it now. Mr. McCord pacing back and forth up and down the hall in front of Nola's room, just like Heathcliff in Weathering Heights, waiting to hear about the condition of his only love. Gracie, I really hate to bust your bubble, but Mr. McCord's going home to get some rest now, and I think that's a good idea, because he had an even rougher time of it than I did. Oh, well, I saw Mr. McCord at the Cedars. He was moodier and more reserved than ever. Oh, Henry, I think he was just worried about Nola. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Tony, uh, you, you must have gotten to know him in the last few days. What's he really like? I don't know. I spent the last 72 hours with him, but I don't know him any better now than I did when it began. I'll tell you one thing, though. He kept saying Nola was the most important thing in his life, and I believe that. And he didn't think a thing of giving away this solid gold uh, cradle thing he had to get her back in. And when Silas Crocker was holding a knife at his throat, told him he was going to kill him. The only thing he said was find Nola and save her. And that doesn't sound romantic to you? It's just like in the movies. 